So this is the third series of the um, tutorial that I'm posting to you um, of the anatomy of the human body. So if you see my previous ones, I've done the anatomy of the skull and then I've um, done the anatomy of the vertebral column. And today, um, what I'm hoping to go through is the anatomy of the um, upper limb. So it includes your arms, um, your rib cage, your sternum, scapula, your uh, clavicle, and everything. And then in the um, next tutorial, I'll probably go through the pelvis, which is a really complex, um, complex uh, bone within the body, and it differs between the uh, males and the females. That's going to be done in a separate video by itself, and then I'll go through the lower limb, um, so the skeletons of the lower limb by itself on a, another subsequent video. So, so this one's going to be about the upper limb. Um, it might take 20 or it might take 30 minutes. My videos are quite long because I tend to do these um, anatomy tutorials um, usually you know, straight away. So on your left. What we have here is the 3D model. Um, this is basically an app that I downloaded on my Mac. Um, you can also get it. It is the 3D Medical um, Essential Skeleton 4. I'm not sure if it's the latest one, but um, this is what I use for these creating these videos. And the right here we have um, some diagrams which are which I've got from Google. So these are not drawn by me. This is I think it is Netta's. If you ever have Netta's anatomy book, you can see these type of images. And um, here you can see the copyright by Pearson's um, education. So look, by no means are these diagrams drawn by me. Um, I'm just using these equipments to you know, bring to your attention the different structures and anatomy that you might need to be aware of whilst you are studying. Right. So, um, before we get into the details of each of the anatomy, let's just go through the basics. So over here, what we have here, also known as the collarbone, in normal English, what we say is the collarbone, it's known as the clavicle. Um, we have both a left and a right. Um, next to the clavicle, um, behind it we have is the scapula. And we have that on both sides as well. Um, around the scapula, around the front, um, your arms, your um, this bit of your shoulder um, is formed from the humerus. Um, and this is a very complex process, as you can see on the right. Um, and I'll go through each of them in very fine detail in a bit. Um, and on the bottom, near your um, where your actual uh, hands are, it's your you have two bones um, connected to the humerus. Um, we'll go through the cartilages and things that's you know in between to the connections as well. So near the thumb we have the radius. So the bone. So whatever you want to, uh, whenever you want to know the difference between where the radius is and where the ulna is, and the ulna is this one on the, um, on the left. So the ulna is on the left, and the radius is on the left as well. So this is both the part of the left arm. Now the way to identify between them is that the uh, radius is always near to your thumb. So this is your thumb. So imagine this person here, he's got his palm facing upwards and this is your left arm. So the radius is the bone closer to your thumb and the ulna is the one um, distal to your thumb. So proximal and distal are the words that we use in medical terms. Um, so you have your hu uh, radius, ulna, humerus and then you have the same thing here as well, humerus again, radius. Now what you have is your uh, fingers or your digits, that's what we call it, um, but this is your wrist and this is known as the carpals, then you have your metacarpals and then over here what you have is your, um, um, so you can see here intermediate phalanx uh, of the third digit, so phalanges which are the more distal. Um, but we'll go into those details, and I'll give you an acronym uh, which was taught to be taught to me uh, on how to remember these. Um, you know, if you ever do forget them, sometimes all these Greek words and all these anatomy words can get a bit too much, and we do tend to forget it. But on the right here, 
uh, on the top right, you know, I always put a diagram. Um, we'll start with the scapula and the collarbone, and, and we'll isolate each of these, and then we'll go through the different processes. So we know this is collectively um, the superior surface and the inferior surface, so which means you look from the top. This is what the clavicle looks like. So we're going to take the dissection of this, take it out, and isolate it. So if I was to get rid of um, this thing here, so what we have here is the superior view, which is shown on this side here. Um, so this is the left clavicle, but what we have here is the right clavicle, and you, I hope you can see the difference. This bit here corresponds to this. I mean, you know what? I'll make it. Um, I'll isolate the one on the right, so you know it looks almost similar to the yeah so now we have it so if I was to go in a superior view and get rid of this these well, things can get in the way of it um, yeah so so you see here it's the same view as the one here is a superior view so when you're looking down from bird's eye view onto the clavicle and you have your acrimal end here and you have your so the acrimal end is shown here and you have your posterior so posterior meaning uh, the back so if the, the area which is facing towards the back of your body and your anterior is here this bit and then you have your sternal end which is um, shown here so you can so just to remember I'll write posterior posterior here and there's the anterior side. You know, bear with me, but this um, thing isn't the best for writing stuff on. But yeah, no, so this is the acrimal end, and here's the um, sternal end. So, what I mean by sternal is it, is, um, it will come on, I'll go on to talk about the sternum, which is the middle bit, and this bit uh, connects onto the sternum, and there's a special joint names of the joint um, that we'll look into all of that in a bit detail. Now, if you were to look at this in an inferior view, so if you turn this around, so this is what we have on this side of the image here. So, we over here we had the acrimal end, now there's the same thing again, we have the acrimal end here and we have the sternal end here, but we have two faces. Faces are area, two areas where two things connect, so if you ever watched my vertebral anatomy video, you know that the uh, thoracic region connects onto the um, rib cage or the costal cartilage, and they do this by demi facets. So facets, is, um, so you can see here, there are facets here. I think it's a bit complex yet. So that's the facet there. So you can yeah, sternal facet of the clavicle. So this is the sternal end. We have one the same, same on the other end as well. So this is back to the superior view now. So now, so I hope you get the idea of the anatomy between the, uh, behind the clavicle. So this is also collectively known as your collarbone, in the simple English, I guess. All right. So if I move this guy across, I don't know. I think I should name my um, name my three D anatomy. I should give him a name. Jim or Bob or something like that. I don't know if, if, if you ever find it interesting, you know, wasting time, please <laughs> leave a comment below what should I name. But now, um, let's move on to the, so what we have here is the um, humerus, which connects onto the scapula, which is your backbone or your flat bone uh, on the back, and it helps you to move up, move your shoulders up, move your arms, and various different processes, and we'll look into a bit more detail on scapula. So if I was to click on the scapula, and isolate that. So you can see here is the scapula. Move this across. Now over here, um, this image here you, you don't have the um, you don't have the uh, collarbone or the clavicle attached to it. But you can see here there's on the right you can see this is a bit of the clavicle that's an attached to it so the acrimal end so it connects onto the acrine, acrimion but before that let's just focus on to the anatomy so here we have the glenoid cavity 
of the right scapula and this is also you know the same thing that we have on the left as well so there's a glenoid cavity um, here we have the coracoid process this arch kind of thing that's branching out um, on the top we have the acromion which then has also a face, small face at the face of the acromion right and it's known as the clavicular face, uh, articular facet so it binds or connects to the uh, clavicle um, and this is the other face at which uh, the articular surface so this connects to the humerus or the glenoid cavity you can call it um, what we have here this part here is known as the if I get a pen uh, this area here is known as the neck of the scapula and we have the infraglenoid tubicular this is the outer bit here which is shown here this is the infra and that's that bit there the infra which is shown here infra glenoid tubercular well, I don't know if you if you would ever need to know it in that much detail but um and you have the lateral border so the lateral means medial means towards the body and lateral means away from the body so you have your lateral so this is so the way to imagine it is so if you have your heart um if an object is um if an object is is closer to the heart then it's proximal And if it's away from the heart or towards away from the center of your body, so you're near your sternum or your rib cage and away from it, so your arms is this means it's more distal. So here's your lateral border and um, your inferior angles present here. Uh, and then you've got your the main bit here is the subscapular fossa. So if this is the lateral, then um, you know. Using your common sense, you would know that this is the medial border on this side. Uh, so, just to to it. There's medial. You know, if I, I really do with a graphics board, and I've ordered one, but it, you know, it still hasn't come. There's the medial, and here's the lateral. There's the lateral side. Um, what we have here is the superior border. So if this is the medial border, lateral, superior, you know, and you have your inferior angle, which is this curved thing, the curved bit here. Now, um, what you want to be aware of is um, this area here, which is, uh, so if, by the way, this is, we're looking at the scapula. Um, head on now, so what we have here is the superior border. So I've gone to that, and you have this bit here is known as the superior angle. Right now, if I flip this uh, completely around, so this is how you would uh, look at the scapula from the back. If you have a, um, so if I was to turn this one around, uh, yeah, so there's how the scapula looks from the back. Now you might be wondering what are these, what's this, so you know this bit is the acronym and here's the coracoid process uh, from the back and this then attaches onto the uh, clavic clavicle and this bit attaches onto the humerus um, and so on and the um, acromion or the, um, so I'll we'll flip this around back again to get Better idea. So this is the acro um, no, sorry. This is the coracoid process, and this is the acromion. So if it will slowly flip it over. This bit attaches onto the clavicle here. So if I was to draw this, this will then attach onto the clavicle here, like that. And there's the back. So this is you're looking at the scapula from the back. Now over here, what we have is the um, the spine, which if you if you ever touch the back of you, or you move your arm up and you palpate the back, you always feel that there's this bumpy bony ridge, which goes across your back, um, just about on your scapula, and this is known as the 
spine. And that's the spine of the scapula. And uh, what we have here is key parts that you need to know of. We have the infraspinous fossa, which is located here. And then we have the supraspinous fossa. So the infra means, you know, you can remember as inferior and superior. Then we have the superior angle. We have the medial border down here. We have the lateral border. We have the inferior angle down here. Um, and then this is a key area here which many people forget to mention in or learn this is known as the um, this is known as the uh, notch the suprascapula so this is a supraspinous fossa um, and this whole thing is known as a scapula so this is simply suprascapula notch and that's simply the way I will just put it, super scapular notch. And if you can't understand my writing or you don't understand my accent, please look across the right on the detailed diagram here. So this is shown here, the super scapular notch. And then you have the acronym over here. And yeah, so that's basically the anatomy of the clavicle, the collarbone, and the scapula. So if I was to swing this back around now. Um, I hope you understand. So just to get um, go reiterate and go over it very quickly, we have the subscapular fossa here. We have the neck here. We have the articular lenoid cavity of the scapula here. We have the um, we have the crocoid process which stops right there. Then we have the acronym which then connects onto the clavicle. Um, we have the supra lino tuberculi which is the this bit here which is the outer surface lining like that the circular bit there we have the medial and we have the lateral we have the superior and we have the inferior angle on the bottom um, around the back we have the spine we have the supraspinous fossa uh, suprascapular notch we have the infraspinous fossa um, so yeah that's basically the scapula done so now if we go back, so I hope you get the idea of what the scapula is and how it looks like, and as well as the, um, so I'll still go back around now.